You only need three skills to get out of Herald, guaranteed, probably. I don't care if you're a new player or someone who's been trapped here for thousands of hours, these three skills are the most important that I frequently see are lacking in Herald games whenever I do coachings or replay analysis for this rank. I have a concept called Herald Hard Mode I want us to talk through so that we understand what we need to do in order to get out of this trench. Our goal is 770 MMR, that is when we make it into Guardian out of the bad Herald players and now into the bad Guardian players. The issue is at this lower end. Now, actually, all Heralds will sometimes have to deal with this, but it especially happens at the bottom of Herald. And that is, there is a floor of what your MMR can be. Zero MMR, though actually it's one MMR in the console, which is then rounded up to 10 MMR in the system. You press play Dota, you get 10 players. It looks roughly even based on medals, but you gotta remember that medals reflect a range of potential MMRs, especially the peak that someone has reached. So this Herald 5 player, you might imagine should have higher MMR, but he may have gone on a lucky win streak, hit Herald 5, but then start to lose again, and so his MMR is back down here, uh, but hasn't lost enough to actually lose the Herald 5 medal and drop back down to Herald 4. So medals are a rough representation, but not a true reflection of MMR. When you average out these MMRs, it looks like it's going to be an even game, but you gotta remember that MMR is also not a true representation of your actual skill, which there's no real way to know. It's a lot of self-evaluation, and as humans, we tend to overestimate what our actual skill level is, but if you play enough Dota, MMR will roughly reflect your actual skill level just based on playing enough games. You get all the randomness out over time unless you enter the Herald hard mode zone, which is at the very bottom here because the game cannot give you less than one MMR in the console. That is where you can find your like true MMR. Usually it just shows you your true MMR, but if you have one MMR, the game will show you as 10 MMR. The issue is, is that you might be hot dog shit at this game, and you might actually be like negative 600 MMR in reality. You're just really bad at Dota for some reason. The game cannot put you as negative 600. The game puts you as one MMR. No matter how many games you lose in a row, after 100 losses, you will still be one MMR as far as matchmaking is concerned. Same with this guy at 30 MMR. He may actually be a negative 200 MMR player, but had a lucky win. The enemy team just randomly abandoned whatever. He gets a little bit of MMR. It says he's 30. The game is going to matchmake based on 30, but in reality, he's negative 200. You can also have the reverse of that, which is that someone went on a losing streak for whatever reason, but they have since stopped. They calmed down, they did their favorite activity of watching full length videos from the channel Z Quixotics and they did their, you know, they love to comment and like the videos, anything they have missed, they did that, I don't know, it helps them out. They are now in a good place to go and so now they're gonna play at their actual skill level, which is 100, maybe not that much higher than 20, but you get the idea. This, this could be a lot higher. They could actually be like a 400 player who just like, he was really sad one day, didn't get a lot of sleep and then just played a ton of games and lost, but he actually should be much higher. Then you could have someone who's also just like actually really low MMR. So when you take all of this and put it together, the issue is that matchmaking thinks it has found you a roughly even game, but when you take into account the actual skill levels of some of the players who can't be represented lower than one MMR, as far as I know, Valve doesn't really release the info behind their matchmaking, but as far as I know, this would result in average MMRs, which are very different, and that is why sometimes you're like, wow, this game is so easy, even though we're all supposed to be, you know, on the same rank. And in other games, you're like, it is impossible to carry these animals. So how do we do it? How do we get out of Herald when we're going to get into games like this? How are we supposed to deal with this unfair matchmaking? I'm going to introduce an idea here that is a, it's a massive oversimplification of how MMR works. And it's, it's really not how any of this works, but I think it will get the point across to you guys. Let's imagine total MMR in the game. This is the total level of skill when you add all the players together. This team's got the negative players. It's not looking great. 110 versus 1,060. But your job here to beat this system is to play like a 1,100 MMR player. You're going to raise the average for your team, the total skill level. You're going to mostly make up for these negative players. You may be still a little bit behind, but if you think about it, you alone are better than the entire enemy team combined 
when you play this well. Wait a minute, Zach. If I'm a 230 MMR player and now I need to play like a 1,100 MMR player, I have to be like five times a better player. Isn't that a little bit ridiculous? Not at all. I mean, I get it. I know it sounds like a tall order, but when you think about it, 1,100 MMR actually translates to about Guardian 3, which in my opinion, I don't think it's crazy to say you have to play like an average Guardian player to get out of Herald it, like Herald to Guardian, like, I think it kind of makes sense. Don't let the numbers intimidate you. I know like five times a better player sounds like a lot, but it, it's not really five times. Like the numbers don't, I, I don't know guys, just take it from someone who's coached a lot of players. It's really not that hard to go from a 200 MMR player to a 1,100 MMR player, especially when you work on the main content of this video, which is the three-step plan to get out of Herald. Step one, Get your f***ing last hits. You guys have rookie numbers when it comes to last hits. Now, all of this information is from a previous video, but the concept is exactly the same, so I'm just gonna use it. If you just compare the Herald ranked games, the last hits at 10 minutes to like Crusader, Archon, Immortal here, like it is just massively different. And I know from game to game it will vary, but I promise the trend is that Herald is way lower than every other rank. We're only gonna focus on the first 10 minutes because Dota is a game that scales exponentially. So the better time you have in these first 10 minutes, think of it like an investment period. The rest of your game is going to go that much better if you really hone in on these first 10 minutes. So for your reference, at 10 minutes, 86 lane creeps have spawned. This does not include jungle creeps that you may have killed in this time or any like summons in the games uh, from the heroes being picked. So just lane creeps, 86. Now we can actually go ahead and exclude this last wave because this would have just spawned in the base. I wouldn't expect you to get it. 81 last hits. I don't expect you to get every single last hit, but you got to get more than you guys are currently getting because from what I have seen, the average amount of Herald last hits at 10 minutes is usually somewhere between 20 to like 35, 40, like if we're being generous. Now, I know some games you do better, some games you don't, you like do worse, but the consistency that's what we're aiming for and that needs to be better. So sometimes the last hits just like roughly reflect net worths. Other times there are a lot of kills happening. So heroes may move up or down, but like this Dragonite, right? He might be saying like, oh, well, Zach, I see like Dragonite cores in your games that have about 4K, like it's not that bad. I mean, it's true, but when it comes to last hits, you're at the top with 32, okay? 32 out of 81, we are missing a lot here. If you want to get out of Herald at the 10 minute mark core players, Aim for like 50 out of 15. If we look at this, like Queen of Pain, 19 last hits. Here she's got 25, okay? Double her last hits, 50 last hits. 50 out of 81 is only like 60%. So you're getting two creeps per creep wave and occasionally getting a third. It should not be impossible if you put some practice in. 25 extra last hits the value depends on like what you've killed but let's just average it at about 40 gold that is 1000 extra gold for this queen of pain let's say she would be like 33 percent of a better player down here where is she 3000 yeah like 33 percent of a better player if you gave her an extra 1000 she goes to the top of the net worth now when she takes some stupid fight in Herald, she kills the guy because she has 1,000 extra gold. She has finished another item faster than her peers. Support players. I wanna be very careful with what I say here because I do not want you trying to hit this arbitrary number I'm about to put out. Do not contest your cores to be like, I gotta hit the number Zach told me. That's not the point. What I want you to look for are the last hits your cores are going to miss. And I'm not just talking about like, they went for it and they missed because they're bad. That's fine, let them, let them do that. I'm talking about they didn't even go for it. They are closing their eyes. They are like chasing enemy heroes. They're like doing something. They're not even going for these last hits. It happens a lot in Herald. With that in mind, I think you can get 20 last hits at 10 minutes fairly consistently. If you don't hit this number or you go beyond that, that's fine. Just look for what I explained. What I do want you to go for are these denies. If you can get at least 10, that's pretty good. That's like 400 gold you just denied from the enemy along with the XP. The more, the better. So if you, you wanna like destroy them in denies, fantastic. You can look to do that pretty much every game and it would be pretty meaningful. Five to 10 last hits is pretty normal. So bumping it up an extra 10 last hits gives you like an extra 400 gold. It could be your boots pretty quick. Like look at this Omni Knight. We gave him 400 gold. That's like 25% more net worth. So he's just gonna have 25% more to work with. That is a big 
difference. I, I promise you, it may not seem like it. Like, we need to be five times a better player. 25% difference is a huge amount in the first 10 minutes. Step two, hit the <laughs> enemy. It's really difficult to do a deep dive into how to harass correctly within this video. So I don't know, look to other videos I've made or drop by like my streams, ask me about the specific heroes you're playing to like learn some specific tips and tricks, but to cover some common mistakes that all heroes, all players tend to make from what I've seen in the Herald bracket. One, being way too dependent on spells to harass. Some heroes do use a good amount of spells to harass, but every hero should auto attack to harass. And actually auto attack should be the majority of harass. Many Herald players just do not do it nearly enough. Harass does not have to kill. You can be satisfied with just chipping away the enemy health so that maybe next time you can get a kill or they just feel too low health to approach the creeps. That makes it easier to hit those benchmarks we just talked about and to make the enemy miss them. You can be satisfied with this and stop. You don't have to chase, but many heralds, they overextend and it is very easy to go from a good trade to all the way a horrible trade because you dove and you you chased way too hard and now you've completely thrown away the advantage you just built up. So you have to learn that balance. Don't do too much. Don't do too little. As part of learning, you're going to do that and it's going to you know you're going to mess it up. But after a while, figure out what that balance is. Do enough harass and later it'll set up for the kill attempts. It just doesn't have to be right now. Many Herald players ignore the amount of creeps. Four creeps do roughly the same physical damage as one enemy hero in the early game. So if you fight into eight creeps and two heroes, you're essentially trying to 1v4. And that's ridiculous, right? But for whatever reason, Herald players just do not tend to think about the amount of creeps in a good or bad way. Like, this is a good time to fight or this is a bad time to fight. They just ignore creeps. Heralds are often unaware of what the other heroes are doing. So if a fight happens slightly off screen, it just doesn't exist anymore. And so they could make a huge difference on that fight and they're just sitting, watching a creep, or maybe they're not doing anything. I've, I've seen that as well. So working on trying to be aware, like I don't see four heroes in this lane. Where are they? You know, move your camera around a little and see what's going on. You might be able to make a huge difference. Then there's poor itemization. Uh, for example, people will buy a ton of clarities, ring of Basilia, stuff like that, because they think they have to only harass with spells. No, 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 that's bad. Uh, but I do want to highlight not enough regen or sometimes people know they need to buy regen, but they wait too long. So like, it, it, instead of buying it at one tango left and getting the next set in so that they have it right away, they they use that last tango, they take another 300 health of damage, and then they're like, hmm, sure need a tango now. Then they buy the tango, then they gotta wait for it to arrive. And at that point, they've missed like an entire creep wave or two because they're too low health to show up, so they just sit in the back doing nothing. Example number one, Ogre Magi, five here. You just got a kill and some assists at the bounty runes. This slow right here is fine. You are using the slow to walk up and attack. It's allowing your Venomancer, who isn't going to the top lane, you guys are getting another kill here. Sure, why not? I'm down for it. That is a perfectly fine, perfectly good spell cast. Here's an example of a bad spell cast. You eat a mango you didn't need to eat, throw Ignite on Dragonite. You're also going to damage this range creep. Ignite costs you 80 mana. It's going to do 100 damage, but factor in the magic resistance, it's about 75 damage. This guy has 8 HP regen, so in less than 10 seconds, your spell cast will mean nothing to him. How about your mana pool? Well, with the Sage's Mask in our backpack not doing anything, we have 0.9 mana regen, so about 80 seconds until we get our mana back. 10 seconds? 80 seconds. That didn't make much sense, did it? How do we make that make sense? Well, if we make use of the slow on Ignite, like we did in the first example to auto attack him, where you have 79 base damage, uh, you'll get a lot more damage in during the slow of your auto attack because he can't run away because he's slowed. And that's how you will combine your auto attacks with your spells for good harass. Just throwing Ignite, that is a waste of our mana. Onwards to another mistake. Here, you're gonna ping out this Shadow Fiend. Let's fight this Shadow Fiend, I imagine you are saying, because the PA is coming over, but, why are we fighting this Shadow Fiend? Well, Zach, isn't it? You told me to hit heroes. Isn't that good? I'm getting kills. There are good times to fight and bad times to fight. The issue with fighting this Shadow Fiend, who admittedly is in the middle of nowhere, he does look susceptible to two heroes fighting him. You probably could get a kill. But where is PA leaving to come get this kill? If she gets the kill, what if he just runs away? What if he just teleports right now and you waste all your spells, something this kill doesn't work out? Well, you all came over here for nothing. This Dragonite who was being bullied, now he's free reign. Now he's just getting lasted. Look, PA's missing this range creep right, right here. 
and then uh, more creeps getting low here. So we're just saying goodbye to Lassus. We're gonna chase this Shadow Fiend around. It turns out we are not going to get him. So we baited our PA. Instead of chasing the Shadow Fiend, here is a hero who is by himself. Now I know Dragonite is harder to kill than Shadow Fiend, but when we compare the locations in which they are at, if we fight this Dragon Knight, we get to stay near the creeps and fight Dragonite. Doesn't that sound better? Let's take a look at a Dark Willow who believes in Force 50%, that her team is always worse than the enemy teams, her supports barely know how to press buttons, while the enemy team supports are always harassing the carry nonstop. Here we go, we're into the laning stage. We're gonna harass Nature's Prophet, sure, why not? Here's a deny you could go for, whatever, ignore it. So, Bristleback now in the lane, it's going to be easier to harass a melee hero who can't hit us back, rather than the ranged hero with a longer attack range who can hit us back. So let's continue to hit that range hero and be glad that Bristleback's going to ignore us and just go for last hits instead of turn and hit us. And then we have to run from two heroes all the way back this way while taking a losing trade from a Nature's Prophet and a Bristleback, who, by the way, is starting with a Nature's Call. Okay. The enemy supports are much better than mine. Okay. So another last hit. We could go for a deny here. We could go for a deny. Nah, okay, here's another one. Here's another one. It's getting low. Okay, we haven't gone for anything yet. Here's another one. Here's another one. No, here's another one. Here's another one. No. Now oh, Zach, I harassed and I got a kill. Isn't that good? Well, yeah, like I'm glad you guys got a kill and I am saying, you know, harass, look for kills, stuff like that. But we killed him partially because he has nature's call. He's not winning these trades because he has the wrong build. So you out harassed him because he was really bad. And yeah, we wanna take advantage of that in Herald, but as you try to climb up and people don't do this and you keep doing the same thing, so you climb a little bit against the Heralds and you lose to the Guardians who take Q, then you're like, four fifty percent Like, they're just better players who are now punishing the things that you are doing incorrectly. You should not have been harassing this nature's prophet. Morphling should not have waveform level one to go from here to over here to kill this guy. There's a lot of herald shenanigans here that allowed you to kill this guy and it's not strictly from proper play, good harass, stuff like that. But whatever, you killed the guy, it happens in herald, let's just go from here. So he's gone, it's 2v1 in the lane, we should have free reign of the last hits. This one's out of range, it's up to Morphling. Dark Willow, you're on this range creep right here. Hit this thing, deny it, deny it. Deny it, deny it, deny it. Dark Willow, deny it. Dark Willow, Dark Willow. Bristleback just got it. We were supposed to get that. Okay, okay, here's another one. Morphling, he's over here. He's not watching this. We're closer. We can get in range of here before Bristleback hits it twice. Dark Willow, you're gonna hit Bristleback. Now this right here is also a bad time to harass Bristleback because you are aggroing the entire creep wave. So when this whole creep wave hits you once, you are probably taking more damage than you are doing to the Bristleback. So you started this with about 350, a little more actually, they've already hit you a couple times. You tangoed there at the end, so you had a little bit of region helping you. Nature's Call here showing that Nature's Profit is back. We should back off here because you can't win a 2v1 trade and while you're running away, they might get free hits on you, so you should leave ahead of time. Instead, you're sticking around, you're gonna be forced to use W, for what? Because you just wanted to hit Bristleback a little bit more. Didn't really need to use it. So this is not a spell cast we want to be forced to use because it's our escape. And so guess what? Now we are just about to die. So we chased Bristleback, who I'd like to point out really didn't lose that much health. And instead, we lost a massive amount of health on our half. So we can see how we went from a good trade of Bristleback's on his own. I'm going to zone him a little bit. He backed off to here. You were here. That was really good. We overextend by a few seconds and now we're freaking dead. So now we can't do anything in the lane. So now because you're low, you're just gonna sit back here, walking back and forth. Not really do, I don't even know where your career came from, okay? But look at all these last hits, denies, harass, things we can't do. This is where carry players complain, like my support's just sitting back here. Well, you're like, well, I'll die if I go forward. Yeah, because you bought the wrong item. So if you bought regen faster and ahead of time, you would get to play the lane this whole time instead of just sitting back here doing nothing, which you could have at least done a pull, by the way, on this creep wave, do like a half pull or something, right? You gotta find something to do if you're low health. We are at full health. 
You could just back away from here. This is not the time to harass a bristleback as a creep wave is coming in and we have no creeps right here. But by walking forward and then choosing, instead of going this way, you decide to cut across the creeps like this. You just lost 150 health to creeps for nothing. You didn't do anything with that. Just by padding, you lost 150 health. That is like a full spell from an enemy hero. You just gave it away to the creeps. Then you're gonna walk back here and I don't really know what you're looking for. You're trying to find if nature's profit is right here so you can be between bristleback and nature's profit and then die over here. I don't know. You should just be over here. Look, a, creep, a banner creep even is a fantastic one. Just go for the deny. Then bristleback's like here going for the last hit, hit bristleback. Go for the deny, back and forth, repeat. Who cares where nature's is if he's back here? Now I care a little bit if he did a pull, but the creeps are right here, so I know he didn't do a pull. You don't need to find him, but instead you came over here. You fortunately find a courier like, sure, okay. Uh, that was convenient. You didn't know it was coming unless you're cheating and you sent this to me anyway. Oh, I wouldn't recommend that, but you didn't do it. So. You came in full health and we are now down to 140 just by way of choosing a horrific pathing. By the way, I just want you to know the uh, force 50% enemy support who's like way better, who has an orb of venom and started with nature's call uh, during that whole time. Yeah, he was just jungling the small camp Yep, right there. Just uh, just a click, not doing anything. Trance uh, just sitting there for a little bit. It took all his attention. He literally just walked by you. He did not see any of this. The only reason you lived is because this guy did not look anywhere and could have just stood right here, A clicked and killed. He could have AFK'd here and killed you, but instead he actually chose like the worst possible thing for himself, which was to just walk across here and give you a path to go through. So I promise you guys, I know it's frustrating to get stuck in Herald, but it is a lot easier to see your own team's mistakes than the enemy's team's mistakes that benefit you. You just don't know to look for that stuff. All right, here's one for the core players. So Winter Wyvern is kind of fighting you over at last hits. Supports, I kind of want you to be like this Winter Wyvern, but not as griefy completely. But do go for the last hits that your Sand King or your cores cannot get. Even with a teammate who will fight you for last hits, you just gotta remember that is the norm in Herald. That is what is going to happen. You need to be better at last hitting than the other three heroes in your lane. That is just Herald stuff. So don't stress out too much. Like if I had supports, I didn't do this, I'd be better. You're still missing a lot. Let me show you. So first off, this and I, our timing's wrong. And I am gonna be mean on timing this time because it does matter. Usually I brush over it in replays, like, oh, you'll practice it. And you should. I don't want you guys feel too bad when you mess with the timings, like it will happen. But if you wanna get out of Herald, it's gotta happen less. Sit and practice the timings. So onwards miss that one from timing this one barely got but it was really really close this last hit here missed based on timing this deny missed based on timing last hit extremely close but barely got that one Woo! now i'm going to show you a series of mistakes that lead to you being full health all the way down to nearly dead first you're going to come up and right click an earth shaker sand king is not good at right click trades you got to recognize what your heroes can and cannot do Sand King is not someone who just casually pokes people unless it's literally free. But these creeps are dying. They're going to have a bigger creep wave than you. You have two range creeps, two melee creeps. You have one melee creep that's about to die, and then it's just going to be the range creep. So now it's not a great time to fight. You can maybe go for the deny or just play it safe. And you see how Winter Wyvern went for the deny? She didn't quite get it, but that was very good of Winter Wyvern. So now you really need to back off. Instead, you're still hitting this Earthshaker. All these range creeps are hitting you. It's like two heroes are hitting you right now. So now we back off. Okay, so first we've lost about 100, 150 health. This range creep could go for a deny, or we could recognize once that range creep is dead, there's four enemy creeps alive, and they are going to focus on me. And if this team has any slows or stuns, that is going to be a very bad trade for me. So... You kind of recognize it now, or I don't even know if you recognize it now, but Earthshaker recognizes it. He stuns you, so now you're stuck over here. Run this way, cut a tree, get away from the enemy heroes and the creeps. Use your stun, which you took at level one, stun over this wall so you don't lose a lot of health. Your choice is to walk back through all the creeps. Fortunately, neither of the heroes are hitting you in this time for whatever reason. You still lost about another 200 health. You should have lost like an extra 200 health if these heroes both attacked you twice. Because you're low health, you really should just chill back here and occasionally walk up for denies and last hits. You're coming up to hit the Earthshaker. You're getting hit. In an even trade, you versus Faceless Void. Let's pretend you're on the same level and let's pretend it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. You're at 50% health, he's at full health. 
So if you trade to the death with a faceless void, you will always lose and you will die. So what are you going to do? You are going to run away first, and while you're turning your back, faceless void is going to hit you one more time, and that is a losing trade for you. It is not an even trade, even if you had like the same damage and all that stuff, because you had to turn and run away first. Whenever you guys are low health, you want to be careful about fighting, especially as a melee hero. Ranged heroes have an easier time because they can do like free attacks, especially against the melee heroes. But melee heroes who get low and you're at 50%, you want to be very careful about what trades you choose to engage on, especially if it's into two heroes right next to you who have a level advantage, who have a creep advantage. They should try to fight and kill you right now. But fortunately, Eh, they, they like don't really do it. I mean like Earthshaker's trying, Face is Void, is he gonna use his abilities? Like, okay, there we go. I mean, if you took time dilation, you're dead, but whatever. So you see like the series of mistakes that you made have now put you extremely low and now you're scared to contest anything, which means these creeps that come up, you kind of just end up losing all of them. Especially when you decide to stun into the enemy heroes while tanking like seven different creeps and then we die. Three last hits currently, it's two minutes in by completely your own decision making, nothing to do with the Winter Wyvern in this lane whatsoever. We've died and now six last hits here. We're gonna miss all of them because we are dead and these creeps are now under the tower. You're gonna miss this deny based on timing. You see how the tower's focusing this one and Sand King is watching this one supports. This is where you focus one creep. Let's pretend they were both just regular creeps. It doesn't matter which one you get. Then Wyvern goes for one, Sand King goes for another. Last hitting, missed, missed. Wyvern did get these. Yeah, if she didn't attack, you probably could have made it over to get at least one of these last hits. I don't know what you're doing here. I think you're shopping, but because you're back here, you're not up here, you're gonna miss this last hit uncontested. Hey, here we are, now we're here, let's go. Okay, now we're backing off again as that creep was dying. So you backed off too far, didn't make it in time, we missed this last hit. As this creep is dying, let us go ahead and note that there is a banner creep. Three melee in total, two range. What is this like? It's like there's three enemy heroes here. This is also a bunch of money I would like to have from the last hits. This five last hits would double the amount of last hits I have. So what are we gonna to choose to do? That's right. Let's fight into the enemy heroes. Waste Sandstorm again. Like, I get it. It's a tempting kill. But there's always a chance it doesn't happen. And currently, an Earthshaker kill is probably worth two to 300 gold. And this right here, this is about 200 gold. So, if you can last hit properly and not miss too many of these, this is the guaranteed gold. This is the very, very risky gold that you may not get. Herald players, choose the guaranteed gold. I'm gonna stop nitpicking here. It is five minutes and 42 seconds. You have seven last hits. Wyvern is at 11. I know she is fighting you for some of them and it's messing you up, but we have seen enough examples that you have missed at least 10 last hits from your own decision-making or like incorrect timing. And that will put you at the top. 17 last hits is where we're at in Herald. Go on over to play Dota go to play versus bots solo, start wherever you feel you need to, but if you can last hit in hard bots or unfair bots and go to like one of the side lanes, so there are three bots there and the bots all think they're carry, so they're all going for last hits. If you can outlast hit the bots, all three of them in your lane, you will outlast hit the three heralds in your lane fighting for the same last hits. Step three, pick flexible heroes some of you need to hear this okay so huddle in like really focus in on this i often hear if i had good teammates i would win my games and i would get out everyone would if they had good teammates news flash you're in herald and heralds are bad what heralds are bad how bad this bad uh not you guys you guys are different you you're not the bad heralds you watch my videos you guys are the good heralds that are going to get to guardian and that's why we get to preemptively say heralds are really really bad there's a couple principles i want you to keep in mind when picking your hero now that we're on the same page that heralds are bad first the meta does not matter so do not worry about picking oh this is the top hero this is what's good like if you don't have 50 of these last hits 
This top tier pick just does not matter. You will not hit the timing of why it is good. Oh, he's going to counter pick me. He has 2,000 gold at 10 minutes. His counter pick does not matter to you. If you hit the 50 last hits or more, you will just kill him. Do not pick heroes that are heavily reliant on teammates because you are in Herald. That means your teammates are going to be Herald and Heralds are bad. Wah, my supports aren't doing anything. My Spectre pick's not gonna work. If you're playing a pub game and your teammates are really bad and you're about to rage at them, you're like pressing enter, you're getting ready to type, stop, breathe in, take your hands off the keyboard, and slap yourself in the face for picking such a weak laning core that needed a support to do their job correctly. They're not gonna do their job correctly. They're heralds. Heralds are bad. Pick heroes that can play multiple roles, especially like new players will end up in herald and they don't know all the different heroes. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I, was, I thought I was Luna carry. I didn't realize Juggernaut was also a carry, right? Pick a hero that can go somewhere else when that happens. Or you get someone who's like raging. It's like, that has to be my role. You're like, fine, just take it. I'll go do something else. Extra value to the heroes that can play core and support so that you can always adjust to the bad heralds in your game. Play cores that can jungle early. I am not saying go level one jungle. I am saying when you get to the lane and whoa, my herald teammate turned out to be bad. I couldn't have foreseen this. You can go jungle. You're not like anti-mage like, I gotta get my battle fury or I can't jungle, bro. You've just given yourself like 20 minutes you are dependent on your bad support. Luna, Sven, Gyrocopter, Naga. These heroes can jungle as early as like level three. It's not the greatest, but in the worst cases, you can do it. If you can't even get to level three with a bad teammate, like you have an individual problem there. Like level three is so easy to get even in the worst matchups possible. Play supports that can scale. I am not saying you're gonna contest your core for last hits, but when they're missing all the last hits because they're not even in the lane or the game just goes to one hour, don't be an oracle who is still going to have to save the bad cores who keep trying to dive into the tier four fountain stuff like that, right? Pick a snapfire. Build BKB Daedalus and just kill people. And even though I've said all of this, give your teammates a chance. Do not just immediately assume he's in Herald, he has to be bad. You're in Herald, you don't think you're bad, right? So this could be a guy also trying to get out of Herald and he's taking the time to learn. Do not immediately grief him and be like, I'm just not gonna play with this guy, like he's gotta be bad. I'm gonna go jungle, I'm gonna do whatever. Like, Give him a chance. And when he shows he's in Herald because he's bad, that is when you then start adapting. But see that first. So with that in mind, here are a couple of heroes that I think can play multiple roles. You don't have to pick any of these in particular so long as you are following the principle above. But I thought these were some beginner friendly examples. Here are some heroes that I think can play every single role. It may not be optimal in some of them, but I guess I'm saying like, I could win with these heroes in any given role in Herald. So like, if you wanna learn these heroes, I think you could too. As long as you're trying to follow these principles, pick a hero that you think does that and it will help you out a ton to adjust to the fact that Heralds are bad. There are other things you can work on to speed up the process of getting out of Herald and feel free to watch like get out of guardian, whatever video as I get to them and like other videos on the channel to learn those things and to incorporate them but do not focus on them more than these three things here because these three things, like it's really all you need in my opinion. There is no strategy when you have 10,000 more gold and you just kill people. That is it. You don't need to know more. You don't need to like improve on other stuff if you are simply good at attaining net worth in the first 10 minutes from getting last hits and killing enemy heroes. And you have heroes that will fit those situations when your teammates are bad. Like that. That is it. Zach, that's not it. I do those three things and I'm still stuck in Herald. I will be happy to be proven wrong. Feel free to send me a link to your Dota buff if you think, Zach, I already do all this stuff and I am still stuck in Herald and I will show you why you are not doing these things well enough or you are actually correct and then I will give you advice on how else you can improve and get out of Herald. But you guys have to convince me this is not enough because I have coached several people out of Herald and I am confident this is all you need if you do this well enough. I'm gonna let you guys know now, if you challenge me on this and I am still right, I, I'm gonna roast you on that thumbnail. I'm gonna be like, this Herald thinks he's smarter than me. Like you, you better be confident in it before you challenge me. I'm telling you guys, this is all you need to get out of Herald. If you need any help improving your last hitting or your lane harass, bam! 
creep aggro video. I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, it will be linked in the description. You don't need to know all the fancy tricks right now, but a basic understanding, a basic application will help you a lot against heralds who do not know that information. And then maybe, I don't know, rewatch it again as you go up because then you will need the advanced tricks like two, three, four times. I don't know. You know, it might help you, it might help me. I'm just putting it out there. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching the creep aggro video in advance for four times. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I am determined to get each and every one of you out of Harold. If you're interested in that, if you like Harold, feel free to stay. But if you have any problems, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to help you guys out. Bye.